Hello and welcome to a new episode. We are working on code on focus for Android in a pretty safe manner with a mask. Um, no, not really, but see this awesome mask with like the Firefox on the Android on it. Um, she can't see it that well because the Android is green and the green is like filtered. <laughs> it's like invisible. Um, Let's see, can I, can I disable this for a second? Yeah, here. Yeah. So that's how the Android looks like. Awesome, right? Um, let's turn it back on. That you do not need to see my wall. Okay, so we are going to work on focus for Android again. We continue where we left off yesterday and we are not going to wear this mask. You want one? Go to my gift shop. <laughs> There's no gift shop. All right, um, focus. Focus is a privacy browser. If you haven't seen it in German speaking countries, it's called Klar and the main features are that you um, can browse the web without getting tracked by trackers and ads and so on. And at the end of your browsing session, you press this little trash can icon and your browsing history is gone. Awesome. So it's a neat little browser for quick browsing and in situations where you don't want to pollute your browsing history. Okay. And usually I work on a project called Android Components. And the goal of this project that we started yesterday is to integrate one important component, that is the concept engine component, into Focus for Android. Hi, Max. You want a mask? Uh, maybe we can send you one, like my wife made those. Um, so the concept, com uh, concept engine component is... Uh, um abstraction over the rendering engine that the app uses so the app can use either webview or gecko view which is a rendering engine provided by mozilla and focus is just much older than this component so focus doesn't use it yet and if we make focus to use it then we gain two things number one is Focus will use the same shared code base that other apps like Firefox Preview use. So we have a shared code base that's nice to maintain. And the second reason is that all the other Android components that we have that need to interact with an engine also will use the interfaces that are in this concept component. So by making Focus use this component, this allows us to use a bunch of other components. And that is great for us. Less things to maintain or um, only one shared thing to maintain. So the state of things from yesterday is that we removed all the Gecko view and web view stuff that was still in focus. Focus for a while was using both rendering engines while we migrated from web view to Gecko view. And we removed all of that, moved our component code in and by doing so, we removed a lot of code and we commented out a bunch of things. And we ended up with a browser that still loads things. This is now using code from our component and you can still browse, but a bunch of things are broken. And today we could start looking at how to fix them. We just need to decide where to start. Um, Let's see, we could maybe, I wonder if we should start by fixing some features from this toolbar, or we look at all the code we commented out and make it work again. Let's see.
just looking at this code, I also wonder if we should just simplify this now that we use the component. A lot of other things here seem unnecessary, like those helpers and things that keep references to the session because we have a, like a session manager in the components that do this for you. So all we need to do is to remember if we have an ID or not. Good question. Where do we start? Hello, hello. Can you hear me again? Looks like the same thing like yesterday happened again. Um, the first notification when someone follows me somehow breaks my microphone and then it stops working. It seems reconnecting USB fixes that. Super weird. All right. Um, Now, I need to rewind and I'm actually not sure where I started. <laughs> um, the last follow was three minutes ago. So three minutes ago, I was probably talking about where to start. Yesterday, we got this thing working again that it can browse. And now we have broken a bunch of things. And one of the things I was just looking at is the find and page bar. Focus has its own implementation and nowadays there is this component that I showed earlier that can do all this stuff for us. And I was wondering, should I make the toolbar, the find and page toolbar in focus work with the new component that we integrated or should I just remove that too and drop in the component? And I think what I ended up deciding is I, I think I want the new component in because if I start rewriting all this code here in this find and page bar that used the old interfaces and stuff in focus, then I end up basically rewriting the component. And then at this point, we can also just write the bullet and <laughs> drop in the component and refactor even more. So, I guess we just try doing this now. So let's look at the browser fragment. I haven't looked at this in a while, so I need to figure out how this thing looked like. Looks like here at least we include a find and page layout, okay. So in this case, we would no longer need to rely on that. And instead we drop in the layout of our component. And while we do this, we should also check if we even import this component yet, because very likely we don't. Yeah, it's missing. So let's drop in the find page feature, Gradle sync, and then let's wait. Um, yeah, features like this find and page feature usually have two things you need to do. Drop in the layout and then include a feature class like this one that knows when and how to show it and react to things you do in this toolbar. And this seems quite straightforward, like the feature we integrated yesterday, um, session feature. Where did we do this? Why can't I find it? Pretty sure we added this yesterday to get this working.
Oh yeah, that's actually one level lower. In the browser fragment extends web fragment because there are other things that show web content in focus right now. So there's a base class or base fragment called web fragment in this case. And like the session feature, we will wrap this in a view bound feature wrapper. That's a helper we wrote because the fragment can live lo longer than the view. So we need some fancy way to clear the references to the feature that holds reference to references to the views uh, whenever this fragment destroys it, its views. And this is just a helper that does this for you. And let's drop this in here. And we now need to find an H feature. And once the view is created, we can set the feature instance, which is the thing here. Get the session manager. The session manager knows about all the tabs or what a session is. And then in this session, there's a state telling whoever is listening that there's a find and page action with this text and those results and so on. And that's what the feature needs to know when to show. Hello, hello, okay. Microphone again stopped working. God damn it. Um, please stop following this channel because <laughs> it stops uh, my microphone. Um, so, I have to probably rewind in my head for a couple of minutes. I'm integrating this finding page feature component into Firefox Focus now. And um, God, I'm, I'm not sure how far I need to go back. <laughs> I hope not too far. So this feature component needs some things. It needs a browser store. I may have mentioned the session manager before. The session manager is actually a thing, well, for one that knows about what a session is, a session is a tab in a browser, um, but it's an old thing. We want to get rid of it. And there's a new fancy thing that is the browser store, which works like, like a Redux store. Um, it has all the same data and why we need to support both at the moment, a session manager and a store. We have a mechanism to synchronize both in the meantime. And this find and page feature, we already migrated it to the store. So focus now, we'll need to store two so that we can use this feature. And if, if we pass this store to the session manager, our legacy code will make sure that they both are in sync. So no matter if you listen to the store or the session manager, they both will know about the same tabs and the same state inside the tabs. So let's pass this in here. And then this thing needs the engine view and the find and page view. Um, Let's see. Okay, it looks like in focus we have like a ton, <laughs> a ton of view references here in the fragment. That's something pretty weird that we might need to get rid of at some point too. 
don't want that here for now i think we just look up the view here it's a find and page view are these fragments real android fragments yes they are real android fragments we use fragments wow and there's even some spam i think we made it <laughs> okay so i definitely don't want to buy followers or primes or viewers or whatever okay let's Add the engine view to this feature component as well. The idea is currently. Oh, I need to. I still need to complete the lookup of the new find and page bar. Um, called find and page. Awesome. And now it needs an engine view. I assume to tell the engine if I clicked, I don't know, want to see the next search result. This was called web view. Okay. Press this red. Expected view. Oh, okay. This thing. Yeah, this is a problem in Android. Like view, there's only a view class, but no view interface. So things like find and page view are an interface because we want to support multiple implementations of that. Um, but if you need a view instance, then you need to manually cast this to back to your interface, which is a little bit awkward. Where all are you streaming this? I'm not sure what you're asking for. Where all are you streaming this? Not sure. <laughs> um, okay, we set all the things here. And then there's an on close callback that we don't need for now i think why is this red it's missing no value passed for owner you need to pass a lifecycle owner this fragment in this case and the view because um that's for this wrapper so that this wrapper can register to the lifecycle owner and automatically clear all the view references and so on I couldn't see the spam. Okay, cool. Um, then maybe Twitch filtered this automatically. I can see it here. Oh, okay. What platforms? Um, I only stream this on Twitch right now. Um, but I keep the recording and intend to maybe upload some of that to YouTube too. Okay, um, that already looks good. There's one last thing we might need to do, and that is this part, actually showing the file and page bar. And for that, we need to figure out where Focus actually did this. Um, we're doing this via the menu, so... Maybe we can just find it in here. Some kind of menu handler thing on back pressed. This looks good, yeah. Okay, find a page. Let's ignore those things. And get the feature. If we have one, and then call bind. And Ooh, session 
Okay, now we have this problem that we have those two things like a browser store and a session manager. The new feature already requires the new session state object. And in focus right now, we have only a reference to the session, which is the old thing. So we need to translate between those. And just as a quick hack, we could just go to the store and then I think there should be something, some helper that allows us to that allows us to find this matching session. But to make this work, we might need to integrate this command. No, we did. Okay, so why can't I see this? Helper. There should be a bunch of helpers here. Um, okay, let's look them up on GitHub then. Oh, and now, now why? Because we need to do this on the state. So we go to the browser store, ask it for the current state, and then we try to find the matching state with the same ID as the session we are currently displaying. It's super weird, but all of that will go away once we remove the session manager from focus completely and add the session store into focus. That's something that can happen at the very end, probably. Now this thing is of course nullable now, so let's only do this if we actually found something. Um, I expect us to always find something um, because otherwise we wouldn't be in the browser right now if there is no tab. So this check is probably never, this thing is probably never null. Okay. Run this. And we can also look up this old show and find page what this method did. Okay, it also updated a layout in here. That is a bit weird too. Maybe we need to keep this for now. Let's see. But this view thingy here and the find and page query thing. I assume this all can go. We have a bunch of find and page things here. So let's try also getting rid of all those. And yeah. I hope we will have the same result as yesterday with the engine view. Um, to remove all this stuff here, add only a couple of lines for the components and it still works or even works better than before. Okay, hey, here's focus. Okay, wrong window. Let's type in here. Show the website. Okay, uh, I didn't pay attention, but apparently it crashed. So let's look at the lock and I'm still a very happy PitCat user. I don't like reading locks in <laughs> Android Studio. Okay, so here's the crash. We ran into a null pointer exception. Um, 
Ah, okay, yeah. So what we did is we added this finding page bar to to our layout, and it looks like this has a problem actually inflating. Let's see inflate layout line two six six. Okay, this is where we where we have been looking up the old views. Of course, this is no longer needed. And since we already commented those out, we need to get rid of them here too. And I guess now we are running in a bunch of compile errors wherever this was used. For example here, let's just comment this out for now. Um, okay, so um, quick back to the beginning because it looks like some more people have joined. What are we actually working on? We are working on Focus, Firefox Focus, a privacy browser. And I'm usually working on another project called Android Components, where we build a bunch of Android libraries that you can use to build browsers or browser-like applications. And our current Android browser, Firefox Preview, is built with those components. And Focus is older than those components. So Focus doesn't use all of them yet. And um, we are trying to um, integrate the engine component, which is an abstraction over the browser engine. So you can use either web view or Gecko view in, an, in your app. And what actual engine you use, your code or other components don't care about because you have this concept component with, with a bunch of interfaces that you only talk to. Um, we got it working that we can browse and now we are bringing back features that we broke along the way. And one of the things is to find a page bar. We could try to make the one working we had in focus, but that is a lot of work. And what we actually want is we want another component that we already wrote and are using in Firefox Preview, the find a page feature component, and use that instead, because this means we only drop this component in, have probably only a couple of lines of code in focus, and can get rid of all the custom code in focus. So back to the current state. We did integrate the component, but we still need to make it work. And right now I'm removing all the old stuff. I was still referencing the old code. Those here are all, looks like all the click handlers for buttons. They are all living in the fragment, which makes the fragment huge. So it will be super nice to get rid of all of this code in here, which will make the browser fragment much simpler. Okay, here's some more show find and page. It's the one we looked at earlier. Might be able to remove this completely. I'm just curious about this code here that does. Hello, okay. So thank you for following. Um, whenever someone follows my microphone stops working and I need to remember that to just plug it out and plug it back in. <laughs> um, maybe I need to update this software. Maybe this is a known bug. Anyway, so I continue to just comment out this old code. Um, Doesn't matter right now what it did. Um, once we are done, we can probably just remove it up. But before I do this, I might want to look at this again and see if this implemented some kind of feature that we still need to 
provide at some point. Okay, let's compile this again and see. Okay, some more compile errors to fix. Okay, those things still need to do something useful, so let's just let's make them do unit. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, some more code that try to do things with the view. Pre-calculate the height of the final page UI. Oh wow. Yeah. Let's not do this. Right now I'm more interested in getting it working in a functional way and then look at the UI this headings broken or whatever afterwards okay um like we saw yesterday uh, warnings will trigger errors now we created a bunch of unused code here so let's get actually what is this doing update find and page result probably should just get rid of the whole method at this point <laughs> Because it's not getting called anyways anymore. Okay, um, more unused code. And I'm still in this method. Oh my god. Rest is used. So maybe we will just remove the usage and then remove the whole method otherwise this will take too long now goodbye okay let's try this again Okay, we are working ourselves backwards now. Um, well, let's 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 not remove too much. Otherwise, we continue this chain forever. Let's see. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Not muted. <laughs> Okay, it's running. I'm typing in the wrong window. No. Okay. Okay. Um, we see a final page bar without actually enabling the feature, which makes me think we need to hide this here. But we could at least Oops, try if it's already working. Doesn't look like it's working. And the text is white, so it's super uh, awkward to use. But anyhow, let's start by just hiding the thing. Goodbye, Johanny. Have fun writing code. All right. Let's see if this is looking better now. Okay, there's no final page bar anymore. That's what we want. Let's see if it comes back. We enable this. 
It does not look like it does. Okay. Let's look at where we find in page feature where we actually start the thing. This is here we call bind. And internally this will set the session called presenters. Yeah, it looks like this feature doesn't care about visibility at all and that's up to us. So we need to handle this on our side. Um, we didn't keep any reference to the view though. Does the feature give us access to that? Does not look like so. Hmm. I guess for now we could keep a reference to the view ourselves. It's not something we want to do in a fragment. But for some reason, Focus already does this for a bunch of views here. I assume that Focus actually never detaches a fragment at the moment, but that might um, change in the future. For now, we could keep a reference here and then clean that up once we get rid of all the references here. Does it make sense? For now. Find a page bar in this case. And there's this feature signed here. So what we do is find in page view. We already look up the view here, so we can keep this here this is a find and page bar and then we pass in this into this um okay it's in theory nullable ignore this for now just want to see if this is working and then we need to go back to where we enable the feature and before we enable the feature we make the view visible. If you happen to have any questions, I'm happy to answer questions as well about either focus or the Android components or what I'm doing here. Okay, so again, we go to a website, Mozilla.org. And we want to use find a page. And now let's search something, family. And you can see it actually highlighted family here. I think it also shows the number of times it found a string, but it looks like we are somehow using white text here, so maybe in other parts of the UI too. Um, I go back to the, the view. I think there's actually some styling we can apply here. Let's go back to the docs. Maybe we can fix this easily right now, otherwise we again move on, I think. And we... Where am I going? That's too far. I wanted to look at this. We have a bunch of colors that we can define. Next, some uh, query text color.
yeah we could we could do this now i guess let's, let's define the namespace usually use i'm actually not sure how to pronounce it mosaic mosaic that's what we use usually for our own attributes it's like a short version of mozilla android components okay so let's add some colors here. Let's make the text color black for now. And what else? The in page query text, no, not text size, but hint text color. I'm actually not sure what this is but let's make it black hello test leaks and then the count text color yeah that's the count we are not seeing right now probably because it's white on white and when a page buttons tint that looks fine and no matches text color. Maybe that's something we want to have in black for now too. Oops, that was too much. Um, yeah, those are not the right colors. I'm pretty sure for focus, but I just want to see. Android resource compilation field, unbound prefix, inline 91, it probably means that thing. I mistype any of those. No, they look fine. I assume they are also still supported. That might be another reason. And we added the namespace as well. Let's try again. No, still failing. Um, I'm not sure why. Let's look at our sample browser. So the Android Components project has a bunch of sample apps. Uh, one of them is a browser and I Hope we also integrated the find and page bar here. Find yeah, here's the find and page bar. And it uses a different namespace, but apart from that it looks the same. Great text screen. Let's test for a second with only this one. <clears throat> okay, that worked. So either I mistyped or we might not support all of those attributes anymore. Let's see, there should be this attributes resource file that defines where's this actually i'm lost without an ide <laughs> okay now this exists from multiple okay rest values okay um on first side it looks like we still support all of them but Oh, some of them might not be a color actually well doesn't matter okay find a page okay it is still working of course now the text is um white again but the zero slash zero is now showing up the counts Uh, 
query text color. Let's see if this one is working. And I think one thing we forgot to do is when I press back, this bar needs to go back, uh, needs to go away. Um, yeah, of those people watching, if you have any questions about this code, Firefox Focus, Android components, or what I'm doing here, please let me know. I'm happy to explain again. So, can I type into the right window now, please? Yeah, okay. Let's go to mozilla.org one more time. Use the final page bar and use it while it's loading. Okay. And go. Yeah. Okay. We can read the text. That is awesome. Now let's do this for the other colors. Back. Query hint text color. I'm pretty sure I just mistyped previously. Edge result, because this looks like the same attributes we added five minutes ago. Okay, now everything should be black and we should be able to read the text and then we might move on. Okay, the interesting, the error spec. So they are all referencing colors, I think. So one of them is definitely breaking the app. Is it the last one? Let's just do trial and error. Yes, it was the last one. Namespace is right. Find in page no matches text color. Find in page no matches text color. Oh, we added this twice. That might explain the problem. Okay. This is definitely not a helpful error in this case. Go to mozilla.org. Um, just a find and page feature. Now we get a hint text and we can type and we see results and the numbers. And let's see, get this is 16 and the buttons, they do work as well. Awesome. And if I press the X, um, our callback gets invoked when I press this X and we haven't implemented any of the callback. So that's why the page, finding page bar is still here. Because the thing is the component itself doesn't know how and when and where you want to show this bar. So it's up to the app to define how it appears and disappears. And in the case of appearing, we just set it to visible and now we do the opposite when it, um, it's no longer needed, we will just hide it. Let's see, where did we, here. Yeah. We didn't handle the pressing of the close button yet. So let's do this to find and page view. And for now, this means the set the visibility to gone. And this is nullable, so only do this if we have a view. Some view you added to project use same key. Yeah. Um, definitely the attributes use the same. Okay. 
Let's do this again. Invoke the find and page feature. And then we search. Okay, the arrows work, the X works too, and all the highlights are gone. Okay, there's one more thing that I mentioned before. If we search, and now I close the keyboard, press back, you just leave the browser. And what we expect to happen is the find and page bar should close on the first back. So let's do this too. And I think we already have an on back press. And as you can see, this was handled here before. Now we can just delegate this to the feature. And write something like this. So if this feature handles the back press, then just exit here. Turn true. We handle the back press and then we are done. And yeah, that will be pretty great. We can remove all those view references here. We can remove like this big block and then we can move all those hide, show, find a page things. And yeah, then we only have a little bit of code that initializes the feature and tells it what to do, when to show and hide. Okay, so now it should work. Okay, find a page. I search for Mozilla, 16 results. I press back. We are back in the browser. The fan and page bar is closed. So awesome. This is working. Um, let's try one more feature, I think. The thing I didn't do yet here is obviously you compare this to the old app. Um, the colors are wrong and so on. So that's something to fix too, but I think that's less interesting to figure out the right colors, so I will do this at another time. Uh, I will remove all those use now. Definitely not going to need them anymore. Another thing we could do is maybe implementing this full screen feature now. Um, previously, focus it is itself too. Um, for example, if you look at video content, you press the full screen button, we remove all the other views and then put the activity onto full screen mode. Focus had all this custom code and surprise, there is an Android component that will do all of that for us. It works the same, it will listen to the session manager or nowadays the browser store. Look at the current tab that we are looking at and whenever the full screen state changes, which is usually by the engine telling us that something wants to view this in full screen now, either the page decided this or the user clicked something or whatever. And it will listen to this, this property in the state and once it sees this flip to, yeah, full screen mode on, please, it will do all the things. And then all you need to do in an app like Focus is dump in this feature, tell it this is the store you need to listen to and then it will take care of most of the things for you. So let's try doing this too. And then we can remove also all the full screen handling code here. All right. Um, where do we start? Let's find a page we can test this on, maybe YouTube. And YouTube without being logged in is always um, pretty weird. So please ignore all the weird videos we will be looking at. It's not content I endorse in any way. So 
a YouTube video usually has this full screen button here. And it already kind of works like Gecko View, our browser engine, knows hey, this is a full screen video, so it will um, put this into full screen and remove all the other web content. But you can see the toolbar is still here, the buttons and the activity is not in full screen mode either because there's a status bar at the top. So let's see if we can make this work. Um, there is a full screen feature. So let's check in which component this is. It's in the feature session component. That's one we already integrate. So we can just start using this here. <clears throat> let's see what kind of things does it need. A session manager. We do have the session use case. Sure. A session ID here. A viewport. It changed and full screen changed. Hey. Okay. Test, test. Okay. Um, thank you for following W Droid. Okay, I want to look at the reference browser because we already integrate a feature here. So um, the thing is, our documentation is not that great yet. So actually looking at other code where we use this is probably more helpful right now. Let's see, we have a full screen feature here. Again, we will wrap this in a view bound feature wrapper. This thing is a helper we wrote, uh, if you haven't heard it <laughs> twice today, that takes care of clearing view references. Our features have references to views. Fragments have references to features. And if this chain will live forever, while the, while the fragment is around, then you have the situation where a fragment can get detached, the views get destroyed, but the fragment still has a reference to the feature and to the view. So we are basically leaking the views. And this view bound feature wrapper will register to the appropriate lifecycle observers and then automatically clear the references to the future. So this means we don't need to do all the things ourselves, like having a reference to the view, make it nullable and then make it null in on destroy view and so on and so on. We just need to wrap our feature in this class and everything will be fine. And yeah, let's do this. We move this over to browser fragment. Let's see, we had um, a find a page feature already. So let's add the same for the full screen feature. So in on view created, we have a view for the fragment, so we can actually instantiate the feature now. So we tell this wrapper now, hey, this is the full screen feature that you please take, a ref take care of, keep a reference to this as long as this fragment's view is around. Thank you. <laughs> so we need a session manager. This is the thing again that keeps track of all the sessions. Um, those are tabs in a browser. So this thing knows about all the tabs that are open. The feature needs that to see, okay, the selected tab, does it need to be in full screen or not? And then session use cases. I mentioned this yesterday, I think. Session use cases are, or use cases are classes that we use in Android components that wrap a bunch of functionality in a class that is easy to use. If you deal with sessions or think tabs in this case, there are things like, I want to load a URL in the current tab. You can do this yourself by going to the session manager, ask it, give me the current tab, okay. Now I need access to the engine underneath this tab, and then I want to tell it to load something. 
that's a bunch of code actually that you end up writing maybe 10 lines five lines and that you need to write in a bunch of places and session use cases will do all that for you and will just provide you like a simple method on it and since this is something a bunch of components need to do and sometimes even differently we have this use case classes that you can pass around and we pass one to the full screen feature because it apparently needs to do some things with the session I assume at least leaving full screen mode in some situations Okay, so what else does it need? A session ID, uh, in this case, focus has a session object and we can just pass the ID along. And then it has two callbacks that we can implement, but don't need to. Viewport fit changed. And full screen changed. Um, because if we switch to full screen mode, we might need to do something ourselves that the feature doesn't know about. So as someone who worked since Android 1.6 with it, what's your opinion on the Android development from developer perspective? <laughs> oh, that's a hard question. Um, I'm not sure um, what kind of answer you are expecting. It is a lot better than in the beginning, definitely. Um, the tooling is better. All the support from the Android team is much better. In the beginning, you were pretty much on your own. And none of the tooling helped you much. Like the first app I wrote was an ISC client. And I did network on the main thread. Nothing complained. The app kind of worked. It maybe froze at times, but it worked. And nowadays you have a bunch of things that help you do the right thing and prevent you from doing the wrong thing. I like that. Um, the thing that is not so nice at times, I guess, it that it's super complicated, like life cycle thingies are super hard still. I mean, like, look at this fragment here, like it has a bunch of references to use. And that's actually a no go, no, 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 in a fragment. Like Android can detach the fragment, destroy its views, and the fragment will still be around. And if this ever happens in this app, then, oh, wow, we are leaking all those views and those views have references to an activity and so on. And that's still super easy to do. And it's not always obvious what the right thing is. And I guess the thing that I sometimes dislike when working with Android is that it's you have a problem that is pretty simple if you look at it, but once you start actually doing it, it's super hard and weird and you don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, I remember in, I think in the beginning, I wanted to work with some UI widget that rendered things in a list, list view, I'm not sure. Was it list view and I wanted to render instead of vertical, I wanted to have it horizontal and this, I was expecting, okay, I just need to flip some Boolean or whatever. And it was super complicated. I'm not sure if this was the exact example, but it was something like that. Like, okay, I just want to rotate this and lay out it differently. And it was super complex. And I still run into the things whenever I work on UI, it's like, Okay, that should be fast. I just want to have a shadow here or an animation from here to here. And then you work on it like a full day and write a wall of code. And yeah, that somehow happens quite often on Android for me as well. 
at least um i'm not sure how it's on ios to be honest i never actually wrote any ios code maybe that is just a thing that you need to live with i'm not sure um okay now i lost track what was i doing something with the full screen feature definitely what's with the support of older versions um i think it's totally fine i mean people always blow this up and it is if you watch like an Apple keynote, they always make fun of Android not being on the latest version. And as at least from, I mean, they got a point, but from the point of a dev, from from a developer's point of view, um, I think it's fine. We are supporting right now up to well, starting from Android five up, and that's totally fine. Like all the Android X and Previously, Android support libraries, they do a pretty good job of making your life better. Um, yeah. Sometimes there are situations where I need to write custom code for a specific API version, but it's really, really rare. Like the most obvious APIs, like for notifications and so on. The Android team does a pretty great job wrapping those into compatibility classes that will take care of doing the right thing on the right API. You were assigning view beyond feature wrapper for full screen. Thank you. Someone is paying attention. <laughs> okay. Um, those callbacks. Um, Let's look at reference browser. I think we could ignore them now, but I wonder what kind of things we actually need to do manually. Okay, it handles both. Okay. Uh, on Android, like here. <laughs> on Android P, we do this thing only. Okay, we need to handle viewport changes and I will just steal this method for now it actually looks like something we should maybe hide in the feature eventually like if we have access to the activity then we can do this ourselves and full screen changed what is the other thing doing Okay, whenever the feature detects that we need to go to full screen mode, we enter immersive mode, hide the toolbar, and change the dynamic toolbar max height. I think we can maybe ignore this, but we definitely also want to hide the toolbar and enter immersive mode. Let's see, do we have access to the toolbar already? Enter to immersive mode and exit. Immersive mode is extension method we provide in one of the components. Come on, import it. Yeah, okay. Toolbar. Let's see. Do we have access to the toolbar here already? No, does not look like it. I'm actually wondering. So I mentioned before we have a toolbar component. I'm not sure if Focus is using it yet. My, I don't think it does. Why not? Um, here is the engine view. Include display toolbar. Okay, this is the toolbar piece. 
No. Okay. Focus is still using its own custom toolbar. Um, that is fine, I think. We just need to make sure to hide it. And on what level do we do this? Um, yeah, looking at this, we might want to hide this outer level here, the app bar. Okay, so back to the fragment. And for now, continue the wrong way of keeping a reference here. We will clean up all of those things at the end. Um, the reason or the existence of all those view references here makes me makes me assume that focus probably does never detach a fragment. Otherwise, that would have caused a bunch of problems earlier. Toolbar view and toolbar view here. Why did you choose view instead of app bar layout? Is it because we need only visibility change? Yeah, that's exactly the reason. Um, I don't care in this situation what the thing actually is. I only care about it being a view. And yeah, at the end of the day, I don't want to have this reference here at all. So a view will be fine for now. Um, especially since the thing here, it's a display toolbar. I'm not sure which extends an app bar layout. I don't remember what this is. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure we want to get rid of it too. Replace it with our toolbar component, but yeah, now is not the time. We are already breaking all the things and are slowly repairing them. Okay. Um, let's see if this does anything. And while this builds, I think we go, wait, two things. We need to do two more things. First, we need to actually tell the feature that we created those things. We can call them. Uh, viewport fit changed. And the other one was called full screen changed. Okay. And the second thing is if we go back to the reference browser, again, that thing needs to handle back button presses. And yeah, in reference browser, we do this a little bit differently. But for now, we can also add this to this big if else here. We ask the feature if it wants to handle this. If it does, we just return from here. Okay, there it is. OK. 
Okay, we... Session is not nullable here. That is surprising, isn't this the... Okay, it's late in it, sure. Okay, it's compiling again. Um, that's the wrong website. We need to test on YouTube. How interesting. Does it not work if I... Okay, that's the next thing we can fix. If you're on a website and you type into the toolbar, it doesn't do anything. Probably we somehow broke at some point the code that took this and told the engine to load because previously we called things on the view, like now load this URL. And what we now need to do is Probably use this session use case that I talked about before and tell it, please load this here right now. And this part now is yeah, not connected anymore. Um, but let's do this afterwards. Let's first try if we can get into full screen mode. Okay. Yeah. Looks like we are in full screen mode, but we are still um, showing at least an empty space where the toolbar used to be. And I think that is exactly the code we commented out earlier in this old full screen code. There was some code that changed the padding or whatever, and I'm pretty sure that's exactly what what is missing now. Because the engine view still has this padding from the top. Um, let's see. On enter full screen. Okay, this is for web view, we can ignore this. But this one, it sets the app bar to not be expanded. There's something with the status bar. Oh, okay, yeah. And then call switch to massive mode. Oh, okay, we already had this in here. We can probably remove that. But those here are probably things we still need. Um, full screen. On full screen. Where is it? That is the old code. Full screen feature. Okay. Full screen changed. Let's go into this. Uh, let's move this into a comment here. And on exit full screen, we do. Both things basically the opposite true true okay let's add this to let's stop this weird video okay so and a full screen we want to 
hide the status bar. Yeah, and I still don't like that we have those view references here and they are even nullable in this case, which makes the code even weirder. Okay, we show and hide the status bar and we change the app bar here to be not expanded and here it's expanded again. Okay, let's try this. Yeah, it's good. Okay, so YouTube. And another we are turtle video. Let's put that into whoops. Pick the next one. I got full screen. Thank you for following Uber Chili. So the status bar is gone. That worked. And now it's back and it's completely broken. We see from the top that there is still this piece <laughs> hanging around. On top of the toolbar that used to be behind the status bar, now it's underneath the status bar. This makes me wonder if instead of duplicating this, we should just call into this old code, <laughs> switch to immersive mode. What is, ah, okay. That part is probably what we still need because this changes the window flags and the other one exit immersive mode sets them back. Yeah, let's try this. Hello, thank you for following Linux long number. <laughs> um, for all the people that turned on the stream while it's already running, we are working on Firefox Focus. It's a privacy browser from Mozilla. Um, it's an Android app. We are going to replace a bunch of code inside Focus with code from our Android components. Those are a bunch of Android libraries that we wrote that you can use to build browsers or browser-like applications. And those components are already used in apps like Firefox Preview. Focus itself is older than those components and that's why it's not using all of them yet. And I want to rip out a bunch of old code from Focus and move in those components. And then we have a shared code base between our apps. And we are primarily working on this component, the engine component, which is an abstraction layer around the browser engine. It allows you to use either WebView or Gecko View. Uh, once we have this code in place, Focus will no longer have its own WebView or Gecko View code anymore. And since a lot of other components need access to the engine, Adding these components allows us to use a bunch of other components. And right now we are working on the full screen feature because we removed all the previous engine code, moved in the new component, and that broke a bunch of existing code that relied on the previous code being still there. So we are working our way back to a completely functional app. 
and the full screen feature component that we integrate is kind of doing a thing but it's not doing the right thing just yet it's basically breaking the layout at the moment and i think we may want to try calling into the existing code to handle the view changes because well that is kind of special in focus and i don't want to replicate this right now oops wrong i want to go back to the full screen feature where we initialize it it's here and then we go to on views full screen changed and instead of entering immersive mode here we call into the previous code that did this and also into exit from the previous code <laughs> Let's build amazing tortoise, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, whenever I need to test things with video, I go to YouTube and of course in staff builds, I'm not logged into any Google account, so weird things show up. But I assume that stuff people watch a lot, so makes you wonder. <laughs> Okay, let's build a water slide house this time. Now YouTube thinks like we are totally into those magnetic balls. It'll show us videos of that all day. Okay, um, I think we switched correctly to full screen mode and then suddenly the space for the tuba popped back. Now it's frozen. I think see if I press back well at least exiting the full screen mode is now working as we expect don't have this weird artifact anywhere where we had um, basically two status bars the original one with the dark background and below that our random status bar that we render that usually should be behind the actual status bar to show this gradient that you can't see that nicely right now because we broke this too okay let's switch back to full screen mode one more time okay yeah there's still the space um and i think we will just look at the previous code again i don't want to rewrite this now and so this code we can ignore um focus used to work with web view or gecko view and well we migrated over to gecko view over time nowadays it's only shipping with gecko view and if you go to web view and look at the full screen apis it will pass you a view that you need to add to your layout yourself and then get rid of it once you leave Full screen mode and so on and gecko view that's different you just keep your gecko view and the gecko view itself will just show the full screen content instead of the website um, in web view that's different you need to actually put the full screen view into your layout and hide everything else um okay what is the part we are missing here this actually looks good we do this we we don't do this disabling the nested scrolling um can also compare this with reference browser not sure if i explained this um before like reference browser 
It's a separate project where we as the Android components team build a browser with our own components. As a reference, like if you want to build a browser, just copy this and you start with the working browser and you can start working from that. So that's basically a template for a browser if you want to build your own. And so, yeah, I. it's also a good reference. If you work on something specific, you can see how reference browser does certain things like handling full screen. Mm, okay, it does. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a thing we actually didn't do previously in Focus because this is now an engine view, which is an interface, and behind that can be a Gecko view or web view, depending on what you're using. You need to tell Gecko view that our toolbar is now gone because, well, in, in a nutshell, while you scroll your web page, the toolbar can appear or disappear, and the web content or the engine showing the web content needs to know about this toolbar so that it, the toolbar never hides things you actually want to look at. So maybe just pathing this to the engine view might help the engine to not have this gray bar at the top. Let's see. And jump too far again. Uh, full screen changed. And do we have access to the web view just yet? No, we don't. But I'm pretty sure we already get the view somewhere to set up a feature. Yeah, here. Okay, let's do again the same old thing. The reference here. Um, engine view. How do you give gradient to status bar? It is because of full screen flag and your background. Um, you mean in this situation here? Yeah, we tell Android that we want to draw our activity on the whole size of the phone and behind the status bar as well. And then we keep a padding from the top that has the height of the status bar to not actually draw anything behind the status bar. So it's kind of a full screen activity behind the status bar. Okay, let's keep a reference to the engine view here. Could have been wow it can't oh okay what i cast it to an engine view and it at this point it doesn't know that it's a engine view anymore okay weird don't care <laughs> i just cast it again i want to move on <clears throat> at the end, usually when this is getting closer to a state that you could actually consider opening a PR for the, I will read all the code again and make sure weirdness like this is not uh, in our code base, but I want to get it working functionally first. Otherwise you end up going down those rabbit holes and then there are three hours gone and 
you didn't make progress on the thing you wanted to make pro. Um, yeah, here we are. Here we tell the engine view toolbar's gone, and here we tell it. Again, uh, okay, now we feel the pain of having all those nullable views. Need to handle all the nulls here. Now the property was mutable and of type nullable so that the compiler couldn't enforce it. Yeah, that's the case here. It is nullable and mutable. Okay, let's see. What is another amazing thing you can build with magnetic balls? <laughs> A KFC, of course. Why wouldn't you build a KFC? <laughs> magnet, magnet World Series? Okay. Okay. We still have this gray bar here. And if we go... Go back. Okay, this is still working as expected. Um, okay, one more thing we could try is looking at the uh, layout now. Where is the layout inspector? Um, now we should be able to look at the layout tree and at least figure out what this gray bar is. Oh no, this needs to be installed. Okay, that was quick. Okay, so it looks like we are still looking at the toolbar here. The app bar is still here. And this is the gecko view. It's right up below the toolbar. Inside this coordinator layout. But we are setting Oh, wait a second, we are setting the status bar to visibility gone, and here we operate on the app bar. What are those things? What is the status bar? Yeah, that's only the top part. Okay, and that is actually gone. Why don't we change the visibility of the URL bar? Oh. Okay, yeah, why don't we do this? We also have a URL bar reference here. Um, I'm not sure why don't we do this. This is the code that was existing in focus. Oh, here, browser container. 
Draw the container. What is the? Oh no, that is it's the wrong block. I'm doing that again. The only thing we are not doing is this is nested scrolling enabled. And that's probably because we no longer have a nested gecko view, but we can at least take a peek at what this did. Okay, this is only for the Puba scrolling. And we also call into switch to immersive mode. Is the expanding not working as it should? Um, let's see, app bar. Let's just define. Where's that bar coming from? App bar. I'm super confused now. Where was this coming from and why is it not in our code? Is this in the underlying web fragment? Who defines app bar? <laughs> we click on this. Okay, this is referencing back to the display toolbar in the view, which is already the thing. Oh, I see, we probably have, yeah, this import here. Synthetic view import. But we also have a toolbar view here, which is the same reference. Oh, this whole code needs to change. Okay, this is only um, you right now, and here inside, this is a display toolbar. Yeah, that's the, the reference we added, right? <laughs> <coughs> Now this is a display toolbar. Okay, maybe you need a display toolbar after all because we want to call an actually display toolbar method. Mm. Let's also use the double exclamation mark here just to make sure we are actually calling this on a toolbar here. <clears throat> and let's try this again. Okay, YouTube, surprise us. An amazing maze labyrinth. Sure, want to build this. No, we are still here.
So we tell it to not be expanded, which is kind of happening because it's gone. But there's still this offset. Let's look at the inspector one more time. Yeah, bar here. And yeah, the upper is actually gone. But the gecko view is still offset. Let's see, can we find out why? Especially if you look at the frame layout that is on the outside, you can see that the gecko view is actually moved down by exactly the toolbar height. Like there's some part of it cut off at the bottom, and yeah, definitely you don't want that. Um, let's go back to focus. Didn't we do things with the coordinator layout here too? Oh, okay, that was only for the final page bar. Okay, we are also setting this is full screen property. Is this needed for anything important? No, not really. Sort of back and pause handling. Okay, um, I think the proper solution is to compare this with reference browser and see what's different here. The toolbar handling, the pull to refresh and also the showing and hiding of the toolbar, that has changed a lot recently so maybe this is not compatible with whatever focus is doing right now okay um i'll leave this for another time we got the full screen feature to kind of work we just have a layout issue that we need to fix that's a separate thing there's one more thing I want to do today. And that is, if you are on a tab and you change the URL, mozilla.com, let's go to the watch. Doesn't do anything. Let's fix this one. This is a pretty obvious bug. We want to fix. And I'm not sure where we are actually handling the input. So let's try to figure it out first. Um, I have a URL view here. Let's see what this one does. Actually, we need to go to a different fragment. 
Like focus is actually split between two fragments. It looks like the same fragment, but this is the browser fragment. Once you click here, this overlay is a different fragment on top of the other one called the URI input fragment. So only here we are handling input. And let's see, where are we handling the input? Okay, on commit, that looks promising. First, we try to get the text. Trim it, check that it's not empty. Okay, it's hard to read. Input trim is not empty. That's nicer than not. Trim is empty. And write the keyboard. Some stuff normalized URL we call open URL. And we see if we have a browser fragment already, then we tell the browser fragment, hey, we have a new URL for you. If we don't, then we create a new session, basically a new tab, and then uh, render this new tab instead so this is a use case where we already have a browser fragment like in the background the other situation is if you're on the home screen here the URL input fragment it's the same one it's overlaying the home screen instead of a browser fragment and now if I press this it creates this new session but we are interested in the other case where we already have a browser fragment like this one and we tell it to load a new URL and see we commented this out previously we told the view hey load this URL this is no longer no longer makes sense instead we need to actually perform this action on an engine session that is linked to the session <laughs> What this means is the session manager again is the thing that knows about all the sessions, all the tabs. The browser engine has a similar thing on its side, which is called engine session. Every tab in our model can have an engine session. It definitely has one if we render this tab, but it doesn't need to. There may be tabs that if we don't display them that don't have an engine session at the moment, so um, we don't create one yet. I'm not sure where I was going, but <laughs> if we now want to load a URL in this current session, we need to find the current session, then find the link engine session, and then tell the engine session, hey, we want to load something. And that's what I mentioned before, is some code that you write in a bunch of places. So we wrap this in something we call a use case class. And since we don't want to create those all the time, let's go back to our components class and create one session use cases that we can use everywhere in our app. Now previously, we created some instances in a browser fragment, and I think we should stop doing this now and then use one instance everywhere because this is just a wrapper that wraps some code and hides it behind um, a handy method because what we can do now here is like hey give us the components we need the use cases from that and then we want to load a URL and we want to load the one we just got and please load this in the session give you 
And that's all we need to do. We don't need to ask the session engine for the matching engine session, blah, 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 blah. And that's why those use cases are handy. And that's why we are also passing these use cases to other components. If they need to do something, they just call this method on a use case. And some of those are interface, so you can even change the implementation. Can be nice too. Because otherwise, if every component does the lookup on a session manager itself and so on, it's unchangeable, the component does it. But if you pass in a use case, you can even do your own thing. And Phoenix does actually make use of that. Phoenix is um, the code name of Firefox Preview. So, <clears throat> now this should work again. And I can actually remove this code. And now the load URL method might actually not be needed anymore either. And now we want to go to Wikipedia. Yeah, it's working. Nice. Let's see, who is calling this? A URL input, okay. And the desktop mode thing. Okay. Probably this button. Why is it doing that? Okay, tries to get rid of the mobile parts in a URL. Interesting, I didn't know we are doing this in focus. Um, the reason why I was wondering is because I think this means we can just remove this here completely. And the URL input will just load in the current session. This code is something we could rewrite as well. Previously, we tried to look up is there already a browser fragment and if yes tell the browser fragment the url and the, the browser fragment tells the view since we don't need to call anything on the view anymore we can now directly load the url which also means we don't need to look up the browser fragment in the first place here because well, we don't use this instance anymore we could just check is there already a session and if yes then Let's render the session, uh, or let's change the URL of the session, sorry. And if not, then let's add a new session. Basically what this code does here. So how about we try this? Let's comment this out. We don't care about any fragments at all. There can be fragments or there cannot be fragments. Doesn't matter. And instead we do if session manager huh? okay we first of course need to get the session manager and if the sessions are not empty then we do what we did before we load this URL and if if not we create a new so let's try this and we don't need to deal with any fragments here already a little bit nicer and oh okay yeah of course we need to change the other one too This somehow creates a new URL here. Not important, I draw not not important right now. Then we try to get the component. Um how do we get to the components from here? We have access to to the fragment. So we can 
get the components from it, then the use cases, then we say, hey, please load this URL. And we do not need to tell it the session by default, it will do it in the currently displayed session, the selected session. That's exactly what we don't want to do when we press request desktop site. Okay, let's go to Mozilla.org. And then we go to Wikipedia. That worked, but we are still in the fragment somehow. Let's go to Google. Okay, what is the code that we accidentally removed that did important things? That's this one. If we We enter a URL and we need to get rid of this. And here's the fragment manager. It's called we still need. Okay. Um, if we have a session, then load in this session. If we don't, then create a new one. Looks good. Um, session is actually nullable, so. Um, the caller of this fragment already tells us the session, so we actually don't need to look into session manager at all. We can just see. Do we have a session? Okay, then let's load the URL into it and remove ourselves. And if not, create a new one. So, yeah, even simpler. There's a lot of arc. Okay, what works? Wikipedia works too. Awesome. To navigate, great. Um, yeah, I think that's enough for today on focus. We managed to get find and page working again we managed to get full screen kind of working again there's still one visual bug we need to fix and we can navigate again by typing into the url bar at any point in time i think that's enough for the stream today and i will move on work onto something else and yeah we will continue working on focus um to get it onto the engine component. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more of that, please follow. And yeah, let me know what parts you like and what parts you don't like, and then maybe we can do more of the parts you like. Awesome. Thank you very much and bye-bye.